Hello, this is Victor Art here with a new weekly painting and this time I'm going to explain how to paint or how I'm going to paint this squeak. Uh, I go for a different color, more um, earthy color like this one, okay? This is not finished yet, I have to do the highlights. So I will go for the same type of um, colors on here. So we will start applying Tusgorf uh, Fur that is uh, uh, like a, yeah, it's a uh, between brown, reddish and flesh color. Okay, so it's quite, it's like a terracotta color to say it in a way, okay? So have a, a reddish component, but it's not completely red, have also uh, a part of brown component okay, on, on it, okay? We're going to paint all the skin with that, okay? And yeah, just a thin layer, uh, it's, it's a color that is coming very well, and as I did the priming in white, one layer should be more than enough to do that, okay? So I do that and I come back once this is done. Next, I'm going to use a pair of children inside of the mouth, okay? To do, I don't know how it's called this now in English. So we are going to do this part here, okay? I'm going to paint all this. See what I mean? Uh, try not to go on top of the flesh color we have applied, but I do this before of the teeth because then I can go over the teeth without a problem. Because I think it's important that we don't for leave any part undone. Okay. Always important when you do white primer that you always it's better to overlap a little bit then leaving white parts, okay? So I do that, you can see it's quite a, it's going to be quite a fast paint job, but and as I said, uh, my aim here, in normally my tutorials, it's for a good tabletop standard, okay? It's not for, I'm not painting for display or for competition in most of my tutorials. Maybe the one from Magnus the Red, some others that are big characters, but as my objective is to have the, my metal ready for battle and to play, I go more for efficient paint job than really uh, investing a lot of hours on each miniature. So just, just as a... That's why sometimes I try to do it in a uh, what I find to be efficient way to do the things. Okay, so I keep doing that. Well, it's almost done now. I will do this all on camera. Okay, so also here, this part is a little bit more complicated because we have the bone here, so we need to know where the bone starts and where teeth and where everything goes. Okay. We can also do, and I will do, okay, this part here, the inside of the lips. Okay. This will give this part, I don't know if it's a teeth. Doesn't look like a teeth. Okay. Okay, now here is this. You see, this is the important part. It overlaps with the teeth, and sometimes, yeah, I paint here at the pink teeth, but this is not a problem. So now I'm, we are going to apply the base color on the teeth and I go I will start with quite a dark color. So I will start with a bed blade brown. Okay. I know it's quite dark but from there we are going to highlight it later on. Okay. So we are going to apply this on the teeth. Okay. Again carefully and now we have to be careful and here I just realized that I missed here some pink so more likely we will need uh, don't know is when we need to be sure that we don't leave any white okay and everything is painted so I do that on the teeth and I come back for the next step next I'm going to use dried bark on the nails on the 
hold it on the gloss. Okay. Okay. that white is visible and we are going to apply the last here we are and now we are going to put the base color on the bone and I'm going to use Uzvati bone on the bone okay Play that I wait that this device and then we do the wash. So now that the paints have dry, the next step we are going to do is to apply Aguax air shade uh, all over the miniature. We shake it well and we are going to apply this on all the parts, okay? All over the miniature. We can Skip the bone, okay? and that's all. So we use, uh, put it on the mouth, on the teeth, okay, here or no. We can skip the bone uh, to avoid to make it too dark. Okay, but I'm going to do it on all the other parts. See, we apply this, then we wait that this device before doing the next step. Always uh, avoid that the that is pulling or accumulating too much in any of the part of the, in any part of the miniature. So try to remove a little bit the excess. This should be enough. I want to put a little bit more on the mouth maybe. To be sure that the, the, the spaces between the teeth are dark. Okay. For example, here is a little bit too much, I remove a little bit. So I just go around, check if I have pulled somewhere, not too much, and then I wait the this device. Okay. So now we are going to wait the this device and I come back for the next step. So once the previous wash has dried, now I'm going to apply a seraphine sepia wash on the bone. So we're going to do this here. And we're going to wait at this device before doing the next step. Then we're going to be ready to start doing details and highlights. Okay, so we wait at this device and I'm back. Okay, now that the seraphine sepia have dry, we will start uh, highlighting the skin of the squig. And to do that, I'm going to use two colors. I'm going to use again Dusgor Fur, that was the base color, and I'm going to use at this moment a glow, a Bookman's Glow. Okay, we prepared both colors, and what we want to do is to highlight all the different, uh, yes, type of muscles and texture of the skin. Uh, I will not do the these things yet. Uh, this type of, that they look like I don't know how to call these these protuberances or so I will try to go around them and I focus more on the musculature of the squeak okay so we want to uh, first apply Tusgor fur that was the base color, but as we have done the wash, now the color the color on, on the meter is a little bit uh, darker, and then I apply Tusgor fur. Okay, and the intention here is to start highlighting. I will also take 
we can also take as a lighter color I'm going to use Cadian Flystone, okay? So let's work this light first. So you can see I'm going to do now with the Cadian Flystone. I'm going to follow like that. Okay, in that way we give the intention is to give volume to the different muscles. and show okay if it's too light then I go back with book my slow so we try to not to go too much to the flay stone keep quite ready stone with the ready stone we use for the so we can we try to keep quite close to the two four but we need this Cadian flesh tone to give more depth, more okay, more volume, or at least make like the bright points of the musculature. Okay, I'm going to paint these things here next to the nails, so next to the claws. I'm going to do something like that. When it's a small detail, it's working very well to have these highly contrasting colors. When it's a bigger surface, you want to go slowly. I will apply, for example, here on the face. First, I apply a bookman's glow. Okay. And now I go with the cadian flesh stone and I need the two nostrils. Now, bookman's glow. Okay, we want to make these wrinkles okay yeah what I recommend is to go like that to cover the slot of the separation of the two bars. Okay, you can also use the paint job to help the assembly or to make the assembly less visible. Okay, and while I'm doing that, we can use I will use kissless flesh, that is a very light flesh. paint this type of pustules or grains or things that he has on the skin okay I use this one only for these things but and when it's one that is big I go first with cardian flystone like this one then give less flesh on top. You see? Go back. Here we have a lot. Uh, I want to do it at the same time because I want to see how all is looking like and I like to go by zones. So now I do this zone here and this side of the body. Okay, if I see that glow, if I see that is too much, I go back with Bookman's glow and I make it less visible. Okay, we have this, this is not looking very nice, that is so visible the joint. This is going to be difficult, this was a little bit mistake of the assembly. Okay, should have put... This is in the end is a tabletop finishing. At the bottom we are not going to have we are not going to put um cadian flesh stone most likely. Okay, unless you see and but then here oh what a scary noise. And then here I'm going to put 
this and now I put the book, bookman's glow okay and now I just go with Kislev flesh tone and I do this I will not use Kislev flesh tone on the lips okay on the lids I go with um, Cadian Flesh Tone and I will not cover all the lids, I will go like that so using the texture we see that the lip have it's broken or something like that, we do something like that, we have wrinkles because this will give more visibility to the wrinkles of the lips this thing here I will also put this and if we see that it's too contrasting then I use Bookman Glow and we go on top and we make it darker Okay, you see? I go here with Bowman's Glow first. No Cadian Flesh Stone. from top lips okay and now Now I take Kisle Flesh and I do these things here. We just again Bookman Slow. Okay. Cadian Flesh. So the kiss left flesh to so this one. I'm going to use kiss left flesh to do all this. Once here, we have here and here, here and here. So all them I want to pick up. Okay, this is quite straightforward to do the these things. And I will be doing the skin like that, so uh, I just want to mark here this part. Go back with Kisless Flesh. Not Kisless, sorry, Bookman too low. Okay. And now it's the Cadian. And this all time playing on what is the contrast that you're looking for what is the, the the color of the skin that you're looking for and yeah when you go too far in the light spectrum you play a little bit of the darker colors and you go darker it happens what happened to me here that you go a little bit into the slot you always can use Ryan's high okay and help yourself if you went a little bit into the shading part, so you take a little bit of do not hide, and I will just do it like that, and that's all. Okay, and yeah, and this is quite more or less repetition of the same for the different parts of the skin. So you will keep doing the skin, and I'm back. Okay, 
now we have all the skin done you see you have we have all the detail we are going to do the mouth eyes and finish the miniature so for the eyes I will use Rhinos height because I realize that the shade is not that deep in the in the eye okay we are going to apply this okay here and here okay and now I wait that this device and while this is drying I'm going to paint the teeth and to paint the teeth I will use bin red brown and uh, racker flesh okay so Ben found Rocker Fish here. So let's take first Ben Blade Brown and we go from top to bottom. So I'm going to use Racker Flesh We're going to start from the top again and going to the bottom okay. This is for the bottom teeth but then for this teeth we do the opposite of course we go from so we start from the tip of the teeth and we, then we go to the root of the teeth okay, we want to yeah this is to brown the original color so we want to go whiter okay As I said, the aim of this channel is to give, in most of the cases, I paint for tabletop or a good tabletop. So it's not for display. What I'm trying to do here is more to have nice looking miniatures on the gaming. We can use a little bit of white or we can use also palette um, witch flesh okay, as the final touch on the teeth. And again, we start from the tip of the teeth. I think the most important one is to highlight the jaws. Okay. See, they're looking quite... something like that. Let's do this. These are quite fun miniatures to paint, to be fair. I really enjoy painting them. Okay, let's go for the eye. Now the the Devon Devlin mood. Uh, sorry, Rhinos height. I don't know why I said Devlin mood. Rhinos height is dry, and I'm going to use a uh, dawn yellow on the eye. Okay, and instead of using pure white, now we want to give a touch in the middle of the eye with Don Yellow. Okay, something like that. And here we do the same. And, and for this to work and to make it visible, we need to be sure that we have a nice dark area around the eye before, okay? You see, it's looking quite nice. Now we finalize doing the bone. Okay, and I go back to Zvati bone. I'm going 
to just have a light a little bit, clean up the white a little bit and add some okay, we don't know where he take this one from Okay, here. So I will wait the this dries before doing the final touch this to add gloss varnish on, on the teeth. So here it is and now I wait that the bond completely dries. Okay, now that I have dry uh, we are going to apply hard coat on the uh, teeth. And use a bigger brush for that on the mold thing, the LED to give the sensation of wet and we're going to apply this as well on the bone okay, we don't need to go in that on the other side to the extreme of the bone and as you can see I know it's spreading off uh, the, mm, it's looking whitish the varnish at the beginning, but it will dry perfectly transparent. Okay, so we apply this. We can go a little bit on top of the bottom lip. Okay, that's all. Here we have the squeak completely painted. So let me just clean my my brush. And here we have ready to go to the battlefield together with his colleagues. Okay, also painting the rest of the warband, and you will see all painted to, uh, all them together soon. So this is the my paint job on the squeak, uh, a different color than the official one, uh, more um, flesh than really the bone color, uh, the red color, sorry that we normally see. But I really enjoyed painting that. So I hope you like what you have seen here. Please give a like if you have liked this video, share, uh, subscribe if not subscribed, and as usual, thank you a lot for watching, and see you later, bye!